By now you should have noticed that the website management page has links to all the different forms for creating, managing, and editing your site. We have also added a menu on the top of every form that you use to create your site so that you can easily navigate between the various pages. Before we start expanding your website, we would like to show you how easy it is to manage the site you have already set up. We start with the About Us and a Home Page Management form. You will see that this form is very similar to the sections on the initial design form which we used to populate your website initially. You can also choose one of the different layouts that we have provided or changed to the full home option. All the info from your initial page is now pre-filled on your form. You may now make changes to any pre-filled text block or area. Please take note that you always have to add the About Us header image. You can also edit the header text as required, and finally edit the content, images, or layout of your information. One extra field that we have on this page is the addition of the services text area. You can add more than the initial five services to this area in a list format. This is not added to the keywords of your site, however, so only make changes to your services as required. Remember that in any of the HTML editor blocks, you can add images and change layouts for your content. Since the HTML editor that we added here is very similar to that of a Word document. Once you are done, just click on the Upload Content button and this will automatically change your home page and your About Us page with the new content that you have added. In this tutorial, we will be covering the Business Details Management page. This page is used to modify any details that you have put in your initial content form, so any content that was added to the initial form is automatically displayed and editable on this page. So, the company name and main service would probably stay the same. However, if you want to change the main service, you can select Yes from the drop-down selector, or No, if you want the main service to stay as it is. If you do change the main service, you must re-upload your main website images at the bottom of this form, since all the images that you have initially added to your website were optimized, therefore their names were changed to your main service, to optimize your images for search engine rankings. Next is your website business URL, in case you may want to move this site to a new website address. You can also change your business telephone number, cell phone number, and your business email address. If necessary, you can change your street address, suburb, city, and province. You could also amend the year the business started, the total customers, and the number of annual customers. Finally, if your map did not come out exactly where you wanted it to, you will need to fine-tune your address to get the correct longitudinal and latitudinal coordinates as found on Google Maps. If you have changed the main service, you need to upload your images below the map in the fields that appeared when you selected Yes on the Change Main keyword drop-down selector. Once you are done, simply click on the Make Changes button, and your pages are automatically updated, and your website will be renewed with your new details. So, as you can see, editing the business details is all pretty easy. In this tutorial, we are going to look at the Contact Us Management page. This is where you are able to add or modify your contact pages. We currently allow either multiple contact pages or only a single contact page. The first drop-down that you have is to either add or manage your contact pages or to delete the contact page. We don't recommend ever deleting all of your contact pages because then you will only have a telephone number and email displaying on the site with no form for your clients to send requests through. Additionally, you also have the map on each contact page, so you only ever want to delete the additional contact pages and always have your main contact page link on your site. Next is a drop-down that says either one contact page with only a single menu link on the main menu, or multiple contact pages in a drop-down menu. The fields you need to add are as follows, your branch name or department name, the contact person's name, 
cell phone number, telephone number, the contact person's title, and the email address for the branch slash department. The longitudinal and latitudinal coordinates for each contact page will once again automatically be added, as per the address you have provided in the appropriate fields. Next, we have our special instructions sections. Once again, you can add any special instructions for your users. One thing to remember when adding or editing this page is to make sure that you do activate the number of contacts provided or you will not be able to fill in their details. Let's change that option now to add multiple contacts. The option is now provided to select how many contacts you want to manage or add with a minimum of two contacts and a maximum of five contacts. The reason why the option starts at two and not one is that having only one contact in a dropdown is impractical. If you have two contact pages or more, we will automatically create a drop-down menu for you with a list of different contact pages. Firstly, select how many contact pages you want to be added. You are then given the option to click Activate before you can edit the details for each of the selected contact pages. So go through the process of adding the branch name or the department name, the contact person, cell phone number, telephone number, the title of the contact, the email as well as the address of each branch, and finally the special instructions. Once you've added the first contact, please click on Activate to add the second contact. Go through the process again of putting all the information for your second branch or department. Follow these steps until all contact details have been added. If you come back to this page to edit the contact page again, all the info that you have added will be available for you to edit so that you don't need to insert all the contact details all over again. Once you have gone through adding all the info, adding as many contact pages as you need, you simply click on the Update Contacts button and your new contact pages will be listed, each with a unique form, and the emails will go to the email address that you have specified. If you need to change your social media links, or if you've created new business pages on social media, you can easily add or edit links to existing social media platforms via the social media management form. You will see that we have automatically pulled all the information that you put in initially, and now you can edit these links, add links, and even delete links if you don't want them displayed on your site anymore. Besides the top standard social networks we have listed, there is also the additional social network where you can select one of a few additional social networks like Google My Business, Tumblr, or Reddit, etc. Keep in mind that this will replace your Google My Business link if you select a different social media platform, and you will need to add the link to the new social media page in the box below. After adding or editing your social media links, simply click the Update Social Media Links button and your links on the site will be replaced. If you want to change your images on your site, you can easily do so on the Website Images Management page. This time the form is a little bit different from what it was initially. As you can see, there is one section that is missing from this form, which is the Gallery Upload button. However, we have now added a section if you want to change your logo or favicon. Your galleries are now managed from the gallery component that we have set up for you. Any time that you want to change the images on your site, you can come and change all the website images here in one go. Please upload any of the images in the spaces provided as follows, and it is important to note that you do not have to add all the sections, as only the images that are added will change, however, if you are adding the four landscape images, all four must be added, etc. Step 1. Click on the Landscape Choose Files button. Add only four images by browsing your computer where you save those images, select them all and click Open or Upload. Step 2. Click on the Portrait Choose Files button, browse to your folder where you have saved your images. Select all six images and click Open or Upload. Step 3. Click on the HD Landscape Choose Files button. Add only four images by browsing your computer. Select all four images and click Upload. Finally, if you want to change the logo or favicon, you can do so by following the same steps. 
Click on Choose File, select the image, and click on Open or Upload. To change the images that you have selected, click on the Upload Website Images button at the bottom of the page to upload all the images to your site. You have just re-uploaded your website images, and they have automatically been renamed, optimized, and saved in the correct folders for you. One of the more technical pages that we have added to your Smart Site Builder is the Website Style Management page. This page is for clients who want certain parts of their website more customized and not to just follow the same four initial colors. On the Website Style Management page, you are able to change quite a few more options than you did when you initially set up your website. So, let's go through the various options. From the top, your primary website color which would be your first dominant branding color. Your secondary website color is a contrast to your primary color. Then we have the website body background color, which is the color behind the text or content, and then your body text color, which is the font color of your main text. We have also added the option for the top bar background color and top bar text color, which is the very top bar of your website where you have your social media icons, telephone numbers, and email address. Remember to keep the background and text in direct contrast to each other, so don't use similar colors or your top bar will be unreadable. We now have a footer background color and footer text color, which is the very bottom part of your site where you have your copyright terms and conditions. So again, please keep these colors in high contrast to each other. We have also provided two options for your font, including Google Fonts and Standard Web Fonts. As you select a font, you can preview it in the preview text box below. The main font would be for your headings, your menus, and generally the larger text of your website, while the secondary font is for the standard fonts like the body or content area, the footer, the top bar text, etc. Let's move on to the last three columns. Firstly, you can edit the background color of the logo area and the main menu, and this is useful if your logo is predominantly light and you want to add contrast to this area. Next, we can change the main menu text color for the menus that are not selected. The menu link color would be applied to your menu links when active, and then the hover, which would normally be the same as a menu link color when a user hovers their mouse over a menu link. You could also change the height of your header area. The options are between 85 pixels and 130 pixels. You can change the top menu font size, so if you would like your menu links to be bigger or smaller, or if they don't visually fit exactly into that space on a desktop or iPad or tablet and they flow over two lines, then you simply edit the menu font size to bring the menu back onto one line. We then have the drop-down menu section, which is for the links like the additional pages, additional contact pages, and the specialized pages that are all displayed in a drop-down menu box. You can also change the background area for your drop-down menus here, as well as their text color. You may decide to keep this the same as the header background color, or if you prefer, make it completely different. Remember, keep a contrast between the drop-down text color, the drop-down menu link color, and the drop-down background color to differentiate between the links, background color, and hover links. You also have the option to change all the font sizes throughout your whole website. This area controls the seven various font sizes that are found on your website, let's go through them now. H1 is usually your largest font, which is normally used as the title of a page, and normally the most prominent text on a slideshow and call to action area, etc. H2 through to H6 gradually reduce in size and are considered less important to search engines. These items will change the secondary header text on slideshows, etc. And then finally you get your website text font, which controls the content, or what is known as the body text, as well as the top bar and bottom footer text. Once you've set up the text colors and fonts to your liking, you can simply hit the change website style button, and then go view the changes on your site. If you do not see the changes straight away, it means your device you are editing on has cached the site, so simply hold the control key and press on F5 on PC, or Command and F5 on a Mac, and your page will refresh with all the changes that you have made. 
This is a lot more advanced than our previous forms, however, we aim to put you in control of the actual look of your own website. I hope you have a better understanding of what changes need to be made for your website styling and customization, and how they affect your website. In addition to the predefined pages that we provide you on the Smart Site System, we have also added additional pages for you to add for any extra pages that you need, and do not fall under any of those specific categories. So, to add additional pages, you simply go to the Additional Pages links on your website management portal and select the page you want to add or edit, and you can start with Additional Page 1. So, let's get started. You've got the option of adding header text which will be displayed over your actual header image, so just add a brief explanation about what that page is about. Next, select your header image, and this will always be compulsory to add. You can now add five keyword phrases as per the home page, but these are specific to this page only, so once you've added these keyword phrases, they will be added to the optimization of this page for search engines. You need to also add your page name, Please keep this short and sweet, as it will also be your link on the top menu, so we have limited the page name to only a few characters. You now have the option of adding your page details. You have approximately 8,000 words that you can add, which is approximately 16 A4 single-line pages. So, unless you want your readers to read a book from this one page, you should never run out of space. You are provided with the HTML editor once again, so inside the content of your actual page, you can add images, text, and even embed videos. You can align your images either left, centered, or right, and remember to do a spell check to tidy up your content. You can also make use of your H1 all the way through to H6 styles to enhance your page even more. And this is where the styling will take effect from our website styling form. Once you're done with adding your content, Click on the Submit Page button and your additional page is automatically added to your site. These steps are duplicated on all the other additional pages, so you can add extra, customized pages to your site as needed. There is a separate form that allows you to either add or remove any of the additional pages that you have added, and it is called Publish slash Unpublish Pages. On this form, you can simply select which pages you want to be published and which pages you want to be removed or use the option to remove all pages. If a page has been added, you will see next to each option, the name of the page will appear. If there is no page name, please ensure that you do not publish the page. As per all our forms, when you have made the changes, simply click on the Make Changes button at the bottom of the page.